Well, hi everyone and welcome back to our licensing lunch and learn. Um, you all have made it to week three uh, of learning and, and getting yourself prepared to take the licensing exam. This week we have Dr. Faye Keys, who will is an associate professor clinical in the School of Social Work, as well as she oversees um, our educational technology unit and makes sure all of us faculty are well versed in using the latest technologies to uh, prepare good learning experiences for our students. We are in week three, so now we're discussing. How do you even understand the examination questions and how are we connecting the examination questions to things that you have learned when you were in the social work program? If there's any questions for me related to the lunch and learn, you can place those in the chat and I can respond as, as I um, see them come in. Otherwise, I'm going to not take up too much of your time, turn over the rest of the session to Dr. Keith. Hello everyone and uh, welcome. Uh, my co-host, um, Dr. Thomas will not be with us today. She unfortunately had uh, a couple deaths in her family. So, but uh, we're gonna talk today about the licensure exam. How are we gonna approach questions? We're gonna learn a bit about um, knowledge, skills, and abilities, AKA, KSA. We also are going to examine how to use strategy, strategies to formulate answers and to reduce our test taking anxiety. Every question on the licensure exam has three or four multiple multiple choice formats. And those parts of the question starts with the stem, the option, the key, and the distractor. So come with me as we take a look. As we take a look at questions. Here's an example question. What is the capital of Ohio? We see we've got three distractors. We've got Cincinnati, Lexington, Philadelphia, and we've got Columbus. So while the questions might have a distractor, there's only one correct answer. And we see here, the key is Columbus. All righty, any questions so far? Okay, so. Did you know that the ASWB examination will never have a question that has none of the above or a combination of both A and B? Therefore, if you're using some kind of study exam and it has these options, we want to immediately abort that and find an ASB, ASWB examination practice exam. And also, the writers for this exam, they're trained, they're specialized writers. So they follow a strict guidelines that um, is very important because that means that the exam questions are simple words. It's, sim it's simply worded. And it only has one correct answer. And it's important that we remember that it has one correct answer. And as we take this test, we wanna remember, we always want to have an answer for the question. And we wanna to know too, that there's no trick questions on the exam. And more importantly, you know all the answers for the exam and you wanna know why? Because all of the content is relevant to competent social work. So you, you've practiced, you've done the classes, you know it. And I really like this one. The readability of the exam 
is at a 10th grade level. So they're not going to be tricking you with words or uh, phrases or things that you don't understand. So let's talk about qualifiers. And we use these qualifiers in our everyday lives. We always think, what's best? What should we do first? What should we do next? And what is the most important thing we should do? We do that unconsciously. So, would anyone like to take this example here for me? The qualifiers example? Can I get a volunteer to read through this? Hello? Okay. A social worker meets with a client in a domestic violence. Dr. Shop. Key, someone put in the chat that they are willing to do it. You probably uh, didn't see it. Oh, no, I can't. You can see unmute it. yourself. Hi, hi, yes, I know. Hi, Dr. <laughs> Key. <Steve and Chanda. laughs> uh, yeah. Oh, thank you, Shuri. And You know, I actually have that um, off my screen because it kind of got in the way. So please. Okay, do you want me to read it? <laughs> yes, please. Okay, let's see if I can do this. Um, okay, a social worker meets with a client in a domestic violence shelter. The client tells the social worker that a decision has been made to return home, okay, to an abusive partner. What should the social worker do first? Okay, can I preface first? I've um, well, I'm alum, I've been out for several years and I'm in my last year of being able to take the exam. So okay. I'm gonna tell you like what I've learned and maybe you can help make corrections. So this is what I've learned. So you read the question stem and um, what I've made the mistake on is uh, like I'm all over the place with the question. And because from working in the field now for six years, <laughs> um, Sometimes what I think is not, <laughs> um, they only give you three. Okay, so A is help the client develop a safety plan, refer the client for counseling services, encourage the client to remain in the shelter. So um, C is automatically going to be out because we already discussed where what the decision has been made and it is to return to the home. So the shelter is out. This is what I'm thinking. Um, referring the client for counseling services, yes, but that's not the first thing. Um, the first thing that I would say is to develop a safety plan because it doesn't say that there is a safety plan that has been made. So I would go with A. You're absolutely right. Now, if I could just pass the exam. <laughs> <laughs> well, your, your approach was good. You got rid of the distractors. Yeah, and okay. You, and you focus in on the key, which was A. Because while the actions to describe B would have been appropriate for a social worker, as you said, at a later stage. Yeah. Ensuring that the client's safety was first action to be done, which was the key. And another distractor, you know, encouraging the client to remain in the shelter, uh, does not honor the client's self-determination. So you're absolutely right. And your uh, reasoning and deduction was um, point on. Yay. <laughs> Thank you for the opportunity. <laughs> okay, there'll be many more. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. So uh, there are two types of questions. We've got... Uh, a direct question and an incomplete statement. And they can come in the form of a vignette, a short scenario. So let's take a look at the incomplete or direct question. The incomplete statement is alcohol is a, uh, we've got three options. So the first thing we wanna do is let's eliminate the distractions, the distractors, okay? So we know it's not a, stim a stimulant, right? We can eliminate, eliminate that, right? We know it's not, hyp not hypnotic. We can eliminate that, right? So it's the key. We know it's a depressant because we have eliminated the distractors. 
So the next example, what drug is classified as a depressant? So we're gonna think back. And here we look down and we see a familiar word, alcohol, okay? We just took answered that other question and alcohol was the was in the stem. Ah, so that kind of speeds up the process. We can eliminate the other two distractors and the key is C. Did you see how that worked? Okay, so the vignette ends by asking the test taker to identify an action. And every question is designed to test knowledge, skills, and abilities that apply to social work practice. So you know the answer because you've been doing it. Social work practice, just keep that in the forefront. Okay, here's an example of a vignette. Who would like to uh, take this one for us? So you can just speak up, I can't see the chat. Any volunteers? I'll go. Okay, thank you. <laughs> this is Erica. Okay, um, one second, let me thank you, Erica. this. A social worker meets with a family experiencing stress because one member recently became unemployed what should the first social worker do first? Um, A, begin family counseling. B, assess the family's needs. C, refer for financial services. Um, I would say B, assess the, the family's needs first mm -hmm. because, I mean, how can you, um, it says, you know, how can you, you know, determine what, to do unless you do an assessment, <laughs> a needs assessment. Absolutely right. Again, social work practice. You're absolutely right. We appreciate that. It is definitely a B. Thank you. Okay. So thinking about the cognitive level, on the exam, the cognitive levels are divided in three different ways. It's or the recall, the application, and the reasoning. So recall, as you might remember, is to consider the most basic, it, recall is considering the most basic kind of thinking process. Oh yeah, I remember that. Reasoning is considering most advanced, kind of got to do a little bit of thinking. And the application is somewhere in between the two. Let's take a closer look at recall. Okay, so as we just said, you remember the question. Okay, so here's an example for recall. Can I get a volunteer? Step right on up. May I have a volunteer, please? I'll try again. I, I want to, no, somebody else can do it. <laughs> uh, it looks like Hyatt wanted to okay. go ahead and try it. So if you want to um, volunteer to read the question, you could just come off of mute. You don't necessarily have to put yes or anything into the chat box. Yes. So just you. come off of mute and just say, I'll take it. Thank you. Go right ahead. Now is a good time to think about your process and to um, get used to thinking out loud about your process because then it becomes an unconscious um, effort. So who was going to be my volunteer? I'll go again. I'll take it. Okay, thank you. I thought she said Hyatt. I'm sorry. I thought I was waiting. <laughs> I did say Hyatt. I'm not sure she's having trouble coming off of mute or anything like that. Um, so Hyatt, you go ahead and unmute. Okay, she's okay. Got it. Okay, a social worker at the Substance Use Treatment Center meet with an adolescent client who expressed remorse about engaging in sexual activity while drunk. The social worker tells the client that sexual promiscuity while intoxicated may indicate alcohol use disorder. 
what best describes a social worker approach? Education, confrontation, summarization, clarification. I believe it's confrontation. She's trying to confront the client that she's not acknowledging his act, but on the other hand, she's confronting him that he has alcohol use disorder problem, right? Um, that's one answer. Do we get any other um, suggestions in terms of what might be, what might best describe the social worker's approach? Um, this is Reva. Is she trying to clarify with the uh, individual that they might have a alcohol problem? So I'd say D. You, you say D? Okay, yes, that's, one of, that's one I approach. say A. I say A, education. And why do you say A? Um, well, basically, she mentions um, that it may indicate alcohol use disorder. Uh, the client may not understand what that is. So first explaining, educating the client that what, what that actually is, the alcohol use disorder, mm -hmm. and then moving forward from that point, you right. know, and so you do use probing questions and the, the client might have questions and then you can go deeper into yeah. behavior and actions and stuff like that. <laughs> okay. Yep. That's exactly right. We appreciate that. I really appreciate the way you, you all went about selecting um, your answer and then reasoning why that may be the correct answer. That's the process that you want to get used to using. All right, let's uh, got to go back here. Now we're going to look at application. Now, application so what was the answer? I'm sorry. Uh, what was the oh, answer? I'm sorry. The, a, the answer was education. Oh, okay. Yeah, the social worker tells, the, the social worker tells the client. Okay, application. Now application, you, you use the information in a specific situation. And now here comes all those things I'm sure you guys remember. The rules, the methods, the concepts, the principles, the laws, the theories. This is when all of that really good uh, information you learn goes into practice during the application part. Can I get a volunteer? Volunteer, please. Okay, I'll go. <laughs> no one else wants to. Um, okay, so it says a, a social worker facilitates a treatment group for juveniles who are court mandated to attend. During the first session, a 13 year old brags to the others about vandal vandalism committed in the neighborhood. What should the social worker do first? Okay, I see court mandated. Okay, A, discuss the client's behavior with the parents. B, confront the client about the behavior. C, encourage the client to talk about possible motivation, uh, motivation for the behavior. And D, report the client to the court. Okay, that's loaded. Let's see. <laughs> okay, who's the client? Uh, who's the client? The, the client is the juvenile, right? Let's see. Right, right. Let's see. They write, Let's see. exactly so. So, okay. So, what she's, so I think, uh, let's see, one minute court mandated during the first session. I would say confront the client about the behavior. Um, I don't know if that's right or not. I'm trying, I, somebody else can go. <laughs> it might be wrong. Okay, there's no really right or wrong uh, answer. This is not about being right or wrong. Okay. This is about process. All right. This is about process. And so you say confront the, the confront, the, oh, client, no, well, confront the behavior. Now, would you, as a social the, worker, confront no. any of your clients? Not confront, because um, okay. in, in there, I'm reading it again, they're in a group setting. So they're in a group setting. So mm -hmm. I know that, uh, encourage the client to talk about possible, maybe uh, C. Yeah, you're exactly right. Exactly. I would say, right. see, encourage the client to talk about possible motivation for the behavior because they're in a group. And mm -hmm. so everyone is hearing, he, he brought it forward. So the group right. has the benefit with 
you know, why did you do that? You know, or not yeah. why? I'm wondering what motivated you to, to take that action or to do that behavior, you know, that. Yeah, exactly. That's exactly the approach that you want to go. And you want to go through that reasoning process, you know. Um, what would I do if I'm with my client? No, right, right. No, I'm not going to confront him. You're absolutely right. But what I would do is that I would encourage him. So your process um, was absolutely beautiful. Thanks for sharing that with us. Thank okay, you. let's talk a bit about reasoning. Okay, so reasoning is using our individual judgment. You know, and it involves putting parts together to form the whole. And we actually did a little bit of that a moment ago. You know, we use the information in a certain context with more information, and then we look to see what the options are available. All right, here we go. Who's taking the next one? Me, okay. take it. Thank you, Dr. Thay. Dr. G, I'm sorry. Okay. Uh, a school social worker answered a call from a parent asking for help with a teenager behavior. The parent tells the social worker the teenager is frequently defiant and aggressive toward a younger sibling and family pets. What is the social worker's most appropriate response to the parent request? Suggest a new discipline strategy for the parents to use. Recommend that teenager receive mental health assessment. Explain that the teenager behavior are normal for his age. Consult to the psychiatrist for medication evaluation. Can I read it again? Uh huh. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um. What, are you taking classes at, at, at the campus or on mm -hmm. at the school so, or what? Well, the, the key would be we're looking for the most appropriate response. There's, we cannot determine if there's no clarification regarding anything besides different and aggressive. And it's a teenager, so we cannot ship directly to psychiatric for medication evaluation. Right. I may say C, explain that the teenager behavior are normal probably for his age. Okay, so now the parents have called the social worker, right? So they're looking for something. They want something a little bit more tangible. Okay. So what do we want to give them? Let's say B. I would go with B, right? Mental and assessment, what? mental and health assessment. So she had the social worker has to assess the teenager mental health situation. And right, exactly. And so at this given time, it uh, it's most appropriate response. So just think about what would you do as a social worker, because those answers are geared towards a reasonable person. So just think about your practice. You've been doing this for a number of years. You know the answer. Thank you, Dr. K. Okay, let's move I on. I hope this the, was the right answer B, right? <laughs> yes, correct. The, that was Thank the you. correct answer. Thank okay. you, ma'am. <laughs> You're welcome. So we're going to talk about answering the questions. You guys did a great job. Thank you for volunteering. I appreciate that. So the questions, they're going to be based on actual tasks of the social workers. So just how we reason um, at those, in those examples, we thought about what do we do in our practice? What did you use that same applications? And remember, those questions are not designed. They are written based on your expertise and competencies. So there's no trick questions. The exams are designed to measure your social work skills and knowledge. You've got it. You know the answer to the question. Use the information in the question. We saw a couple of our volunteers go back, review the question, came back and answered the question. They used the information in the question. Okay. You know the correct answer. When you go into that exam room, what I want you to bring with you, what I as a social worker, recommend you bring is your confidence. You've got the knowledge, the experience, the ability, you know the answer. 
a key skill in keeping focus is to keep focus on the question itself. Remember the volunteers went back to the question. They looked at the options and they said, oh, let me go back. So they focus in on the questions. Okay, now you may be asked to re re rely on your recall, your reasoning and application skills, but you will never be asked to add information to the STEM. And our volunteers did an excellent job. They didn't add anything. They went back to the question. So know that the questions you do not use, do not assume anything else about the questions. Don't second guess the questions. Use the information in the question. Okay. And you might try this. Without looking at the options, anticipate the correct answer once you've read the question. Or you might read the options, anticipate which option, what based on the most reasonable person, looking at words like recommend, encourage, you know, from the strength perspective. So you may go that route. Just think about what strategies you could use as you're sitting there in front of the question. And if you have any questions, no pun intended, go back and reread the question, take it apart. We saw some of our volunteers do that. It was a great example. You could take a guess, but what you don't want to do is leave a question unanswered because that would count against you. That would count against you, they say, more than getting it wrong. Because remember, you have 170 questions, and 20 of those 170 are test questions. So right there, when you walk into the, to the exam, you know you're already ahead by 20 points, right? Okay? Yes. Okay. And another good thing about the exam when you're sitting there in front of the exam is that now that it's all electronic, and uh, technology has gotten so much better that you have the opportunity to strike out those distractors. If you remember, some of our volunteers went up. Oh, it's not this. It's not that. Well, while you're in front taking the test, you can actually do that with the computer and uh, you can tag that question. You don't have to um, ponder on it too long. You can go to one's sums that you may know and then get back to that one because you flagged it. So that's a really good thing. The, the uh, software now allows you to get rid of the distractors. And then what, what's left once you get rid of the distractors? You got it, the answer. Okay, so as I said before, there's no tricks. Tricks won't work. Strategies is what you need, strategies. And we all know how to um, develop strategies because we do this for our client all the time. We develop strategies for them. So I'm recommending that you develop your strategy for taking this exam. Okay, so we know that passing these examinations rely on you demonstrating your knowledge and competencies. And we know you got that. And how do we know? I'm looking at my diplomas on my wall. So you know that you know the answer to the question. All right. Another um, thing is that you can't eliminate a question based on the length. If it's short, the answer must be this or the answer must be that. And remember, they're, they're, these questions are there's none of the above or, or both A, B, and C. These questions don't have that option. Okay. And no, there's no patterns to the questions. There's similarities in the format uh, that they're written, but there's no patterns to the question, all right? And the correct answers aren't assigned A, B, C, D. And there's no patterns to um, the answers. And questions don't start from the easiest to the most difficult. And what I have here for you is, um, a link to the guidebook. 
uh, for the exam, which is free. So let's all take a deep breath. And what we're going to do now is we're going to review what we just went through. Everybody doing okay? All right, then come with me and let's review. With Agents of Change, and today we're going to be talking about how to approach questions. So this is going to be one of my social work shorts where I give you some brief, concise tips. And today's going to be important because we're not talking about content, we're talking about strategy. So what we'll be doing is we'll, I'll be giving you some tips and tricks some tools that you can access on test day when you're approaching those questions that are maybe tricky to you or require that critical thinking. We're gonna be using a strategy called the five W's. So there are several types of questions on the exam three, recall, application, and reasoning. Recall questions, these are few and far between on the test because these are just really basic knowledge. These questions require you to remember a fact or concept. For example, a medication question is a recall question, right? You have to know the medication, you produce the answer. There's no higher level thinking for recall other than remembering um, something that you have read in your studying. The second type of question are application questions. These questions require you to not only recall information, but you need to take that information and apply it to case scenarios or real life situations. So now maybe it's referring to defense mechanisms. You not only need to know what the defense mechanism is, you need to be able to identify it or use it in a case scenario or real life situation. So it's taking that knowledge one step further. Lots of application questions on this exam. The next type of questioning is reasoning. These questions are the most difficult. They require the most brain power and they require critical thinking skills. What does reasoning do? You not only need to recall the information, you not only need to apply it, but you need to synthesize, examine the details and problem solve. So these are gonna be a little bit trickier because it requires, like I said, that higher order thinking, that critical thinking, and it's gonna require that you are able to comprehend what you're reading. Okay, so let's talk strategy. You need to have a strategy for answering questions. Um, sometimes people say, I'm having a really hard time, and I say, what's your strategy? And they say, I don't have one. You want to have, when I say strategy, you want to have some tools in your back pocket so that when you get into the test, no matter what type of question you get, even if it's um, a concept or a, something that you've never seen before, you're going to be able to use some tools that you have to get you closer to the right answer. If you see a question and you really just don't know, don't just pick a random answer um, without using some of those tools and trying your best effort first. So you wanna have a strategy and this is gonna help you with efficiency. And what do I mean? If you don't have a strategy and you're spending so much time on a question, you're not gonna get through all of the questions, right? 170 questions, four hours. So you wanna be efficient. You wanna know what you're looking for in a question. You wanna know how you can best answer the question. If you are in your studying and you feel like you're not able to analyze these, analyze question stems, so you're reading the question and you're not really able to pull out the details, you're not able to synthesize, you wanna focus on building out a strategy. And just like the content in the book is important, strategy is important too. You need to know how to approach questions, break them down and analyze them. Here's some advice I give for test day, some tools to put in your toolbox. Read each question twice before looking at the answers. Why? Test day, your adrenaline's gonna be going. You might be going a little bit faster than you normally would. Second time through, you can pick up on some details you missed the first time. Every word matters on this exam, so you wanna make sure that you're being very careful to read thoroughly. Read all answers before thinking about choosing an answer. Sometimes our minds might wanna jump to an answer choice. Oh, I know C is correct. However, stop yourself 
read every answer and analyze every answer before choosing an answer. This is also kind of another checks and balances to make sure you're not rushing or missing any information. Always use process of elimination. You're always gonna have four answer choices, A, B, C, and D. You want to eliminate as many as possible that you know right off the bat are not correct. Why? Much easier, much more efficient. You're gonna be in a much better place if you're down to two answer choices rather than four. Biggest advice I can give is eliminate answers. If you can get it down to two, it's gonna be much easier and your chances of getting the answer right are a lot higher. And you want to eliminate answers that are too extreme or do not answer the question step. What this means is don't jump to actions that are not necessary yet, right? Meet the client where they are, meet the question where it is, meet the problem right where it's at. For example, we're not going to call the police, jump to that action if it's not necessary. If it, if it constitutes that yes, but don't jump ahead, don't jump to extreme action. Some, might, some answer choices are gonna be not appropriate or too extreme at this time. So make sure you're being really mindful of that. Do not add or assume anything that's not in the question stem. If it doesn't mention it in the question stem and you don't find a way to reason to this information, it's not gonna probably be in the answer. What I mean, if it does not say the client is taking medication, we're not going to assume the client is taking medication, right? If it does not say the client is unable to care for themselves, we're not going to assume that unless there are clues that tell us otherwise. So don't add any information. Um, just stick with the, the clues, the words in the question stem. Don't add anything, don't delete anything. Everything you need is gonna be right there. Everything you need is going to be right there. Also, check your answer. If your answer doesn't make sense, with what the question asks, it's probably not the right answer. Okay. The five W's, and you're probably thinking, what is this? It's very old school. Think of when you were back at elementary school. We're talking the five W's, who, what, where, when, and why. That application of those W's that you were testing on way back when, when you were doing reading passages, that's going to help you on this test. And I'll go through each of them in just a minute. But why this is helpful, it's a tool. It's not going to work in every case. It's something to help you organize your thinking and organize the information in a question step. So what, what this does is it forces you to comprehend what the question's asking, right? It's going to say who is involved, what is going on, where is the client, when did this occur and why does this matter? So some of those skills that we learned way back when, they're coming back now and they're gonna be helpful to us. If you're stuck on a reasoning question, and remember those reasoning questions require critical thinking, you're analyzing information, you're synthesizing. If you're stuck, think of these five W's. It's not gonna work on every question. It's a tool to use if you're struggling or you don't know, so that if you're stuck, you're not just gonna say, oh, I have no idea. You pick an answer and you move on. Think of these five W's and use it to your advantage. And like I said, down here, remember you're always building up that toolbox. You wanna have tools that are gonna help you get towards success on test day. Okay, I'd like for you to uh, take a moment and write down three takeaways from that video. And if you like, just share one of them. Would anyone like to share one takeaway? Well, she said, read the question two times before answering. Um, so that was one of the things of, of the other things I took notes on. <laughs> ah, okay. Okay, good. And I put some, some videos um, in this um, uh, PowerPoint so that you could get used to uh, using the videos. I'm not sure if anyone um, uses the videos on YouTube. Back in the day when I took the exam, this um, type of uh, resources, this type of training from the university did not exist. So you guys are very fortunate to have access to all of this um, information and resources. Thank you for sharing. I would like to share. Okay. Um, I think my favorite takeaway was read each question twice. Okay. 
Um, because sometimes you read it one time and you don't see everything, but if you read it twice, you may see something different that you missed the first time. Yeah, yeah, that that that's really good. One of my favorites because it's don't add anything. <laughs> just use what's in front of you because you know we have so much extensive experience and so forth that we know what other issues could result from this. So it's like hey, let's just stay in the moment. So that's one of uh, the things that um, um, I took away from there. Um, so let's talk about the KSAs. I put this link here for you so you can go to this um, PDF and read about um, each and every one of the um, KSAs uh, more extensively. Now, you guys know what the KSAs are, the knowledge, skills, and ability that you have been uh, using in your practice. So what they're gonna test you on is these four areas. I teach human be, human de development, diversity, and behavior in the environment. That's 27% of the tests. Assessment and intervention and planning. That's 24% of the tests. Interventions with clients oops, and systems. That's 24% of the tests. How, how, what's, what percentage do you need to pass? Is it 70? 72, I think. I think it's 70, it's 72, 70 percent. Uh, back when I took it, it was 70 percent. Professional relationship, value, and ethics. I teach ethics. Um, so that is definitely um, one of the things that you always just want to review um, is the code of ethics. And so these are the areas. And so you could always just go to YouTube. Hey, I'm going to spend today as I make up my strategy, my plan for approaching, you know, my um, studies for this exam is Mondays, I'm going to work on reviewing human development. So I'm going to go to YouTube and I'm going to read everything on human development. I'm going to the social work dictionary and I'm going to read on uh, human development. I'm going to the encyclopedia of social work uh, that's all these links are online and I have access to all this information as an alumni. And I'm going to read on the uh, professional relationship values of ethics. So there's so many different ways in that you could just, you know, get a touch up, uh, a review, flashcards, make a note, just write down what you recall from your human development course. Uh, if you've kept that information, just review that, summarize that. There's always ways to review your, your um, knowledge, skills, and abilities. And I think one of the best ways is as you're doing your job and you go through the process with the client. Afterwards, just summarize what you do. <laughs> and what area did that cover? A refresher without thinking about it. I have a quick, quick question, uh -huh. if I may. Um, do you think that it's a good idea to review the DSM? Uh, is it DSM five or six? Is six out yet? I think it's DSM five. Uh, so, yeah, it's definitely there's definitely clinical. Um, I think up there with the assessments, uh, mm -hmm. we'll get your clinical questions um, with the interventions of clients and the client systems. You'll get that uh, DSM, and in number two, you'll get your DSM. And there's um, a lot of videos um, on that um, okay. as well. Uh huh. So okay, you definitely want to go um, to this link, and this link is just dedicated to the areas that the exam will be uh, focusing on. And remember, there's 170 questions. Twenty of them are test questions, and the other 150 you know. Okay, Ashley was going to talk to you about um, the, K the KSAs and explain to you why they're so important. So I do want you to come and take a look at this video. And I put these videos in here so that you can have access and start um, reading these. I remember when I was studying for the exam, I'm a walker. And this was like back in the day when they had cassettes. <laughs> and um, I would just put my little cassette in my pocket and I'd take my walk. And so, you know, nowadays 
go out for lunch on your walk, go out, you know, you can just go to YouTube and put in whatever you want to study that day. So if you want to review um, your um, ethics, find the videos on ethics and just let them play. And, you know, you could cast that to your TV and put the captions on. And so while you're doing, you know, your work around the house or exercising, um, you could just have it on the television. You walk by, there it is. So you're studying and, you know, not even really realizing what the things that you might capture. And that's another way to make time for self is to spend that time studying. And it's going to be easy now because you know how the questions are set up. Dr. Keys, before you move to the video, um, it looks oh. like Cherie put in the um, chat that the percentage you need to pass the exam is 75 now. Oh, on now. And um, there's a couple people who want the name of the book. So can you... Um, the name of which book? Um, I don't know if there's a book that you had talked about. She said a guide. Mm -hmm, oh, a guide. guide. So oh, I have the I have link. links. I have all those links for you in the back of okay. this um, this PowerPoint, and I'll make sure that everybody gets this PowerPoint because there's links right to these guides, and they're free, and so you can download them. Um, yeah, and they're free. And uh, the reason I put in the videos is because these people, this information is free, and it's on um, um, YouTube. And um, they've got the social work podcast. Um, I use that a lot in my class just so that, um, and you know, we have our own librarian and you could go to her and ask her that you could say, look, I need to do this, this, and this. Can you make me up study guides? And she can put you together a digital study guide. And then you could use that as you, you know, as it's convenient for you. Wow. That's awesome. Okay. So um, test taking tips. We just talked about you've got four hours, it's 170 questions. And uh, we, the most important thing is that it's a simple recall. The most important thing is that you know the answers to these questions. If you just wanna work it out, okay, now I'm here with my client and my client's child has done A, B, and C. What's gonna be my approach? You've got the knowledge, the skills, the abilities. You've got the experience. You know the answer. So you've got to practice on your strategy for test taking. So when test taking day comes, you're not nervous. Because you're going in there, as, I, um, as it was stated in the video, with your bag of tools. So you've got your strategies. Okay, and we talked about the uh, exam uh, and the ability to highlight te text to strike through. Uh, and I really, uh, is there any questions? I have, I'm gonna show you your resources. I don't want you to um, have any second thoughts about your ability. The moment you decide that you're gonna take this test, and you're gonna pass it, then you will. Because you're gonna do the things you say you're gonna do because you've told the others that you're going to do it. But you have to decide that I can do this. And in order to do the things I say I want to do, I need to come up with my strategy. Come up with a strategy. As we heard before, you're gonna check your work. Um, you're gonna make sure that you complete the examination. That's important. If you flag questions, go back to it. If you spend a little extra time on one question, you may not need so much time on another question. So don't worry about, oh, am I spending too much time? Don't get caught up in your process uh, and, and, and that's gonna cause you to have anxiety, you know? Cause you know the answer, you know you know it. Okay, and part of your social work education has been learning about techniques for managing stress. You do that for others all day. So be sure you apply them to your own preparation. Get a good night's sleep. 
don't cram because you're going to set up your strategy for studying and reviewing for the exam. And you know, based on that uh, degree or degrees on your wall, that you can't be successful. And you think about all the other areas that you've been successful in. So there is nothing like patting yourself on the back and talking yourself up. Practice self-care. And what do they teach us in school? You can't provide service for someone until you are able to take care of yourself. All right. So now this video here, or this guy here, he has a whole channel, which he offers nothing but free information. And I wanted to introduce you guys. So I placed his exam, his uh, video here, and he has some great tips on passing the exam. I remember when I went in to, to um, take my exam, I went the day before, uh, found a place, I went inside, I looked and it was such a small room and there was like so many computers and the chairs were so close. I said, okay, I'm gonna sit in that seat. And so I picked the one closest to the wall so there would only be someone on one side of me and about three feet on the other, on the other wall because the wall was real, the room was real small. And I got there early the next day and, um, Back then, they let you bring in something. I don't know if they let you bring in anything to drink then, but I had my drink of choice, Pepsi. <laughs> and I, uh, I I did the things that I said I was going to do, the things that I told my friends. You know, I went in there with confidence. I sat down and I passed the exam. Because you know, you get your results right there. And they still give you your results right then and there. So um uh, I went. I remember I went to the bathroom before I pushed that key <laughs> to get my results. And, you know, so you can do this. And the way you can do it is ha having confidence in yourself. Because, you know, you know, um, you know that. Now, today we have covered the different types of questions on the exam. Things that you're going to be measured on things that you're going to have to think about, your skills, your knowledge, your abilities, these things you have. But you gotta, as you plan and work on your strategies, you gotta start thinking, okay, what's my knowledge? What skills do I have? What abilities do I have? And by the time you get through writing or typing, you're gonna be pumped. You're gonna be excited and ready to take the exam because you have formulated some strategies and how you're going to approach answering these questions. You have learned uh, about the questions. You kind of dissected, and you're going to go after this talk and look up some free uh, videos on YouTube. Go to the guide, which um, I have, uh, and here is the link to the examination guidebook, which is free. And here I have some other things that we talked about. We have these um, links, uh, links to the guide, a link to the code of ethics. Now here, this is uh, another video, which you must watch just for relaxation. It is very entertaining. It's the Savvy Remix. And this young lady has a whole series in which um, she helps you study for the exam. Um, the social work license guides for the 2023 exam. So there's a lot of stuff out there. So when you're practicing or studying, you wanna make sure that you're in this year, 2023, because you know there's been some exchanges as we heard the lady in the video say that there's always four choices. Well, we know that in the 2023 uh, exam, the there are gonna be three to four choices. And so we've got a video here. This is a really great video. First, next, best, and most. So to help us start consciously thinking about that, because we think about what we should do first all the time. We think about what we're gonna do next. We think about what's best for us to do. 
and we think about, well, what happens mostly. So this is a really great video. And then there's a, a, a recording for uh, anxiety. And this is a group talking and showing some tips and strategies. And so my recommendation is the, if you are uh, a person that has test uh, anxieties, I did when I was in college and I used to grind my teeth and um, I went to, um, this fellow I was dating, his mother was a professor at the school and I was telling her about this. And so she says, there's only two kinds of tests you're taking. The ones you know and the ones you don't know. Make up your mind which one you're taking and take it and take that one. And from then on, my attitude was, I know the information on this test. I decided I would be confident that I could pass the test. And I had no more problems after that, but I was holding myself back. So I think I'm starting with just reviewing what anxieties could happen. And we have a lot going on, so we don't know what that day is going to be like. And I think on one of the videos, um, they mentioned on the day that you have to take the test, take the day off. Take the day off. That way you're not thinking about what you've got to do that day because you have nothing to do but to pass this exam. And here I have some resources that you may already have access to. These resources was on the uh, CE website. So um, sometimes it's just hard to go get them. So I decided I'd bring them right here as, so that you could easily get to them. But it uh, there are resources there with little charts that will help you set up your plan, give you an idea of what the plan should look like. You know, the lights and their checklists. And then you can then go from there deciding where you are based on, you know, your stage and how you're gonna take this test. But I do believe that you have all you need to pass this test. It's just a matter of you determining that you do. So, um, I know it's a one thirty. just about. Do we have any questions? I am so proud of you all. So continue to do the things you say you want to do. All right. So soon I'll be calling you some of you the good doctors. All right. I'm looking forward to that. Okay. Enjoy.